<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who explore abandoned places, asylums, wooded ruins, etc. What scary things have you seen out there? When me and my friends were young, we lived in a trailer park community in a bad part of Phoenix, but we loved exploring anyway. We found a large old storm drain behind our community covered in graffiti and weeds and we decided to explore. Walking in with many flashlights we kept seeing spots of blood and more strange graffiti. After about 30-ish minutes we started hearing tapping. We got scared and started to walk back out. When we noticed it seemed to be following us we ran like our lives depended on it. A few weeks after that our community manager discovered a body near the entrance of the storm drain. That was the last of our exploring. I was exploring an old storm water filtration plant once. The lower levels of the main buildings were all flooded, which was super creepy, and they were pretty overgrown. This was my second time there, and I wanted to see more than I had last time. A friend of mine and I had the bright idea to climb into one of the pipes that had an open manhole cover, really stupid for a whole bunch of reasons. We figured we knew or had a pretty good guess where it would come out, as there was another manhole on the other side of the compound in line with where the pipe was heading. When we got all the way there, though, it turned out to be welded shut. The worst bit was that when we turned to go back, we realized we'd been slowly going downhill. The pipe was fairly slimy, and it seemed for a minute like we wouldn't be able to go back the way we'd come. I've never quite felt that level of claustrophobia before or since. Spooky cement tunnel that seems to lead underground. Very dark, and echoes go on for ages. We had no clue what it was, it didn't seem to be any kind of drainage tunnel because it was square or bone dry and out on an open field. There are definitely some old bomb shelters and missile silos in our area that are out of commission, so we decided to take a look. Only about 20 yards in, and the light from outside starts really fading behind us. Someone takes out a flashlight, and we start seeing bare human footprints on the ground leading deeper into the dark. None leaving. We skedaddled. I was 16 or 17, so, like, 2006-ish, out in a park in a western suburb of Chicago with some friends. It's a medium-sized forest preserve with a big industrial lot leading to the parking lot, then a private area, then a big old forest with paths. We're walking around the forest for a few hours in the early afternoon and see some random pentagrams around and stuff, honestly, nothing super out of the ordinary, but they seem concentrated by this field that's probably like 2,000 square feet of 4 feet tall grass. For whatever reason, I thought it would be fun to walk into the middle of the grass field. Right in the dead center, there is like an 8 foot long, 3 foot wide rectangle of freshly dug ground, perfect for a body. Because of how tall the grass was, it was almost totally covered, but when I moved the grass back, it was like a burial mound. I told my friend we had to leave, and so we beelined back to the parking lot. My friend didn't smoke in his car, so we had a cigarette next to the car. The cop pulls up, and we're underage, so we flick our cigarettes and start to get in the car. The cop turns on his lights and stops us. Once he sees we're kids, he says something like, better get out of here, it's not a good place to be after dark. I was in an abandoned insane asylum and crawled into a window on the second story to let my friends in downstairs. The building was huge, and I was having a hard time finding the stairwells. I saw a flash of light at the end of a really long hallway and assumed my friends had gotten in somehow, so I started running that way. I ran down past 20 plus open doors to get to the end, only to find a mirror that my light had reflected off of in a dead end hall. I felt eerily alone and knew I had to go back alone, past all those rooms I had sprinted past. I definitely felt trapped and like I needed to get out. It was not really urban, but it was an old abandoned house that was supposedly haunted by the spirit of a young girl who was killed there and tossed down the chimney. So, we walk in the back door into a laundry room, then the kitchen area. The next room is maybe a living room or dining room area. It's a big room, and the ceiling is peeling off in the top right corner. We go through that room and into two other rooms before hitting the stairs. We go up, and there's a dirty, torn up mattress on an old metal frame on the landing upstairs. The attic stairway is clogged with old furniture and whatnot, think fallout when they don't want you to be able to enter a certain area. So we decide to go into a room just up the hallway. It has scratch marks on the door, which is kind of scary. We turned the knob and heard a loud noise. We couldn't tell where it came from, but it was like a loud booming, and the house shook, so we decided to book it out of there. We get downstairs, and the room with the peeling ceiling is now gone and across the room. We left and never looked back. In my early college days, I went with a friend of mine on a drive up to Gold Camp Road in Colorado Springs. For anyone who doesn't know, there are lots of spooky stories about this road, 
which is on a gradual incline and leads you through a handful of tunnels. Purportedly, children died there in a bus crash off the cliff, someone set themselves on fire there, someone wails in the night, you get it. Well, my friend and I went up there feeling brave, and after we passed through the second or third tunnel, we parked and got out. We were just taking in the quietness, and as soon as we stepped away from the car, we heard the unmistakable sound of a shotgun being cocked. We immediately freeze and, in sync, look at these trees nearby, where a very demented looking tall man with very wide eyes said, leave. You're disturbing the spirits. I honestly thought I was going to have a heart attack. We sped down that damn road, drifting around corners at every turn. The worst part was that when we turned our lights on to leave in the car, this menacing man was muttering under his breath very quickly. There was nothing we could hear, but I could see his mouth moving at a million miles per hour, and the way he tilted his head back made his grotesque eyes even wider. Horrifying. I was with several of my friends and my girlfriend. We knew of this old abandoned nursery out in the country, not too far from our college. It was on a weekend, around midnight or so. I don't remember specifics. We pull up, and we park the car. I go in first, followed by my good friend and my girlfriend. To be honest, nothing really occurred until the end, when we found this room at the end of this really short hallway. It had paintings of clowns and two beds in it that were meant for babies. My girlfriend claims to have heard a chuckle come from the room as we were leaving. We all turned because she spoke. My other friend screams as the door slams. Here's the thing, I turned right before she screamed, and I witnessed the door close before she touched it. I know what I ducking saw. She screamed as the door slammed. The creepiest SHT I had seen in person in a very long time. I grew up in Boulder, and the town next to us was Longmont. There's this sugar mill building there, it's huge, old, and super abandoned. One night a friend and I were hanging out with some girls we knew, we're all high school age, so I guess this was the best thing we could come up with, and we all decided to drive over to Longmont and explore this abandoned sugar mill. We're driving down Hover Road when a hatchback pulls up next to us. Also kids. They look at us, and we look at them. Animosity ensued, and the next thing I know, we're driving down the road, and these guys are waving a samurai sword out their window. Okay. Weird. Anyway, we drive up to the sugar mill, a super desolate, quiet area, and this ducking hatchback shows up on the same road. The same hatchback as before. It's just us and them out on this country road. Girls are freaking out, I don't know what to do. We get back in my car and try to drive away, they're blocking us and being super confrontational. I can't remember what was said, but basically we yelled at each other a bit from inside our respective shitbox cars, then they drove off. We did end up exploring the sugar mill that night, but we didn't think too much of the encounter. The next morning in the paper, there was a story about some kid getting slashed to death by a bunch of other kids with a sword. Duck my lift. Goddamned Longmont Meath heads. I was exploring an abandoned mine shaft for the second day in a row. This was in a small, old Midwestern town that used to be booming because of the mining industry but has long been abandoned. It was also a 10 minute walk from the nearest road. This time I went with different friends and better flashlights. The door I had gone through the first day was now padlocked shut, that should have been the first red flag, but we found an entrance from the rooftop into one of the main buildings and continued to explore anyway. After exploring about three floors of mine shaft below ground, we were back on the main floor exploring the workshop slash garage, and I was looking through the cracks of light coming through the rusted metal walls when I noticed a bright color that stood out from the rest of the area. It was a man looking back at me through the cracks, I was seeing his blue sweater. I could see two sets of eyes looking into the room that we were in. I whispered to my friends that there were people watching us through the wall. We ducking booked it out of there and jumped off the roof and into the woods. The men were in a pickup truck and drove around looking for us, even getting out of the truck to look around. We couldn't see them from where we took cover, but we could hear the truck stop, the doors open, and footsteps breaking leaves and twigs only 20 feet away from us. We hid there for about 15 minutes while the men searched all around for us. It is harder than most people think to try to quiet your breathing after sprinting. It was terrifying. I'm not going back there. When I was growing up, my uncle owned a cabin in the middle of the woods up north. It was a small housing community, 50 houses, in the middle of the woods, meaning you had to drive 5 miles down a dirt road and then make a few more smaller turns here and there. There were no signs or anything until you were in the community, so the only way to know it was there was if you owned property there. Every summer, we would spend a weekend there with my extended family, 20 to 30 people. We'd tent outdoors around the cabin and have a good old time. One game we liked to play was survival, which in hindsight was a terrible idea, but it was the 90s. They had dune buggies, 
So what we would do was have the kids team up into two teams. Each team would be blindfolded, driven down the back trails deeper into the woods, and then led on foot even deeper into the woods. Sit in a circle, wait for the parents to start leaving in the dune buggy, and then once we heard them drive away, we could take off the blindfolds. The team that gets home the fastest wins. As an added challenge, a white flag was previously hidden in the woods, so if you found the flag, you got half an hour shaved off your time. We were given a long-range walkie-talkie in case of emergencies. So here we are, a group of five cousins aged 5 to 15, I was the oldest, in the woods with no idea how to get back to the cabin. Each team had one of my uncle's daughters who knew the woods, so it was harder than it sounds to get lost, but it has happened previously. The final time we ever played, the entire time we were in the woods, me and my cousin, who was a year younger than me, kept getting the heebie-jeebies. Normally we go for the flag because it's pretty easy, but this time we just both collectively felt the whole nope, let's get the duck out of here feeling. We made it back in record time, flagless. My uncle went to get the flag after we left, and when he came back, he was so upset. He pulled me and my cousin aside and sternly told us that if we were playing a prank, we better tell him right now. We had no idea what he was talking about, so he told us that someone had moved the flag from one tree to another, so someone was possibly watching us. That night, everyone had to sleep in the cabin on the floor because they were scared someone may have followed us back. We could never play survival again. Years later, when we were older, we asked about it again. He actually went to the garage and came back with a flag, which he had kept, along with this rusty old knife. He told us that it wasn't that someone just moved the flag, they stabbed it into another tree with this old knife, which had blood dripping onto the flag. Written on the flag in some marker, it said if you kids scream, I will get you like a fish. Someone was out there. We're thankful we didn't try looking for the flag. My Bill is an avid ghost hunter, and knowing I liked urban exploration, he brought me along to this place in Maryland. To enter, we had to crawl into this tunnel, which looked like a hole in the rock. When we shimmied through the hole, it opened up into this stone ruin. It was like a cellar with two rooms. Cave bugs with long whip-like protrusions crawled all over the walls, everything was moist and damp. When we crossed from one room into the other, I turned around, and there was an axe leaning against the wall next to the doorway. There was a bed roll and a half-eaten hunk of cooked meat just lying on the stone, like someone had been interrupted mid-meal and left. Now I have hearing damage and have had trouble hearing since I was a baby. When we left, my brother grabbed the axe very casually, and we just left. As we were walking in the pitch black at night, I heard very clearly the snap of twigs behind me. I couldn't see anything, but I told my brother I thought we were being followed. Without turning around, he said, yep, for a while. Nothing ever happened. We got back to our cars and left but, I noped out of ever exploring again. That was in 2009, and I've never gone again since. There's a place in Liverpool, UK, called Mossley Manor. Old nursing home that's absolutely stunning. Inside, it's being left to rot, but there's lots left behind, pictures, files on residents. The place was shut down over cruelty to the residents. In fact, one of the files I read discussed how police were called over to a resident as paramedics arrived to find them dead, yet staff said they died in the ambulance. Anyway, I know this place inside and out. It's a beautiful building with a horrible history. It's fantastic for photos and digging into its past. I would go once a week and bring friends. Teach them how to respect history. One day, I had a feeling. I'm not a huge paranormal believer, but I had that feeling. Something was watching me. What? I don't know. But I felt it had always been there. It allowed me to feel confident before, so it could get me now. What would it do to me? Duck knows. But I've never been back. I have a friend who is into spooky memes. He was giving me some SHT about negative energy manifesting into a poltergeist. He could be right. I would rather not know. I grew up on Lake Lanier in northern Georgia, and I knew many spots where you could go and have fun on the lake without it being too public. There was one spot that was my favorite that was back in this cove, where my friends and I would have beach parties, and my girlfriend and I would go to be alone and hang out. It had an island that was right near it, probably 30 yards from the shore, and mind you I've been here a million times and explored every step of this island. We decided to skinny dip out one night at midnight, and the lake was high at the time so you had to swim out, and we get out there and start getting intimate on this big flat rock near the middle of the island surrounded by pine trees, the island isn't big, probably 60 to 70 yards wide at any point, and out of nowhere probably two feet from my ear in the bush I hear an incredibly strange brphhhhh sound that sounded like a horse or a person trying to sound like a horse. On an island. In the middle of the night. While we were completely naked. 
we moped out in a full sprint to the water, full speed breast stroke, grabbed our clothes and sprinted through the woods back to the car and didn't even get dressed until we stopped on the side of the road a good couple miles later. I still have no idea what it was, but it was something alive in a place that I never thought someone would be. I've literally never been so startled, lol. There are some creepy ass stories about how supposedly haunted Lake Lanier is too, so that didn't help either. Not urban, but whatever. Back in like 2007, some friends and I were into weird NJ stuff. We went to see the Atco Ghost. You are essentially supposed to drive down this street that turns into a dirt road and goes straight into the Pine Barrens. I think you're supposed to do it at midnight, blink your headlights a few times, whatever. The legend is supposed to be that some kid was killed playing basketball when a truck came speeding out of the woods and hit him. So if you follow the directions, the ghost of the kid appears. I drove, and there were like three or four of us in the car. I had done it before, so I was pretty chill, thinking nothing was going to happen. I did the headlight thing. Nothing happened. So I'm like, alright, let's dip. I look in my rear view mirror, and there's a basketball sitting perfectly balanced in the middle of the road directly behind my car. I can't turn the duck out of there so fast. Until this day, I don't know if it was people ducking with us or what. But we were all sitting in the car literally looking for something to happen, so I feel like we probably would have seen it if it were a person. If not, even more ducking creepy. I went to Greystone Asylum in New Jersey before it was demolished, absolutely beautiful architecture, BTW, for anyone who hasn't seen it before, I highly recommend you google a picture. Anyway, after gaining access to the building, we found the lights were still on, weird considering the building had been abandoned for so long. We just looked around the area, checking things out, the place reminds me of the Resident Evil 2 police station. We got to the top of the main building where the chapel is located, and everything is pristine except for the fact that the enormous cross behind the pulpit is upside down. Okay, a bit weird, but people have to have done that before. That's when we start seeing and hearing things. Hallways we had passed coming up are now dark. You can hear things scuttling about in the darkness. Obviously, just mice or raccoons or something, we told ourselves. Then we decided to explore further into the building. So to preface, there are a series of underground tunnels that were used to transport the more violent patients from one of the satellite buildings to the main building for doctor's appointments, etc. At the entrance to the underground transport tunnels, the air grows colder even though it's June, we're underground, of course it is. There are no lights leading down this barren concrete pathway, only the inky darkness in front of us that our flashlights can't even seem to penetrate. As the path begins to gently curve, we begin to see a glow of light ahead of us. As we approach, this is the first light we've seen down here yet, besides our flashlights. It's coming from a room set off from the transport corridor, maybe an office or storage area. We decide to see what's inside. The room is completely devoid of anything except a thick coating of dust on the bare concrete. In the middle of the room, the light we noticed was coming from an ordinary table lamp set on the floor. It wasn't until we noticed the lamp wasn't plugged into anything that we decided to get the hell out of there. A couple months ago, I decided to stay the night at my mom's house because it was super late and I didn't feel like driving home. Growing up half in the city and half in the country, my cousins and I knew better than to linger outside in the dark if we had to go back out to the car to get something we forgot. Even though there was a solitary light several yards from the house, the darkness was all around, and shadows played enough tricks in our minds to send us running to the car and running back into the house. Back to my mom's I have a toddler with a circadian rhythm disorder, google it, it's not always fun, even though I'm a night owl. He poops around 3 a.m., and we have a general rule to toss the poop in the outside bin. I have him in my hip and let the garage door open to go toss the poo. There's a light on the corner of the garage, but it doesn't fill the space between the trash bin and some tall plants on the deck. So, I could see the light on the deck, but the tall plants were bathed in blackness. For some reason, I had this super odd feeling of being watched that just set my anxiety on edge. My eyes were drawn to the tall plants, and I watched for a moment as a breeze ruffled some of them. All but one. That was slightly taller, stocky still, with a round shape slightly larger than a human head. That shit did not move. I clutched my toddler and backed the duck back into the garage, not turning my back as I watched the door close. I made sure to lock the garage door as well. I told my mom about it in the morning, but she brushed it off and said it must have been a plant in an odd position. I went back out in the daytime to double check and only found two depressions in the dirt where I saw whatever it was. It still gives me the creeps when I think about it. I was in a massive cemetery, drive about 500 meters into it, doing long exposure photography with my dog at 2am on a Wednesday morning. 
I'm in a really open area surrounded by densely packed tombstones with no plants or trees around for ages, and my dog starts doing the there's a human approaching bark. Knowing there was no way it could be done by simply glancing around, I ignore the dog barks again and growls. I shine the torch on my dog, and he's looking about six feet into the air, several feet above the height of the tombstones in that direction. Then I got this sensation of real fear that something bad was about to happen. I got this thought in my head, a ghost only he could see was standing a few meters away looking at us, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stay a second longer. I tried to calmly put him in the car and start to drive out. Then my overactive imagination pictures a hundred ghosts walking behind my car as I slowly drive out of the cemetery. Somehow, with the simple bark of my dog and my imagination, I managed to scare myself better than any horror movie ever could. A friend and I went to explore an abandoned hospital in our town. It had a long road that sort of spiraled up a hill to the hospital that you'd walk up, and on the left side of the road is fairly thick woods up a steep incline. As we were walking up the old road, the girl I was with stopped me and said she heard footsteps up in the woods as we were walking. Sure enough, as we started walking again, you could hear the crunch 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 of someone keeping pace with us, but with the steep incline and the thick woods to the side of the road, you couldn't see who it was. We'd stop, the footsteps would stop, and I'd call out, but no one would answer very creepy vibe. We ended up going all the way up to the hospital, then climbed the old stairs that led to the roof, which had a fantastic view of the surrounding area, and walked around a bit till we came to a very large chimney, about 4 by 4 square. After looking down into the dark a bit, I grabbed a few nearby small stones and tossed them down to see how far it went, the abandoned hospital had several levels. All of a sudden I started hearing a weird rustling sound from the chimney, which got louder and louder until all of a sudden I had to duck out of the way as a huge group of bats shot up out of it into the air. It was very surreal seeing them fly around us like crazy, but as it was evening by then, they all mostly flew off. We never had any issues leaving, and we never did figure out who was following us in the woods. I'd say it was a security guard, but they never said a word. A few miles out from my hometown, there is a section of forest preserve that holds an old cemetery with gravestones dating back to around the 19th century. It is infamously famous for being haunted, and people will see apparitions, glowing orbs, and occasionally a saint-looking woman just sitting on a tombstone in a farmhouse randomly appearing when there are no buildings within a nearly mile radius from the grove. Now, I don't believe in ghosts, but I certainly believe in the supernatural and strongly believe the unknown should not be messed with. Anyhow, curiosity gets the better of us at times, and a group of us decided to check it out, hoping to score with our dates. During the day, it was nothing too creepy, and it's sad how so many gravestones have been damaged, vandalized, or even stolen, probably the reason it's haunted. Once dusk settled, that's when things started getting creepy. Night in a forest is creepy. No matter where you go, you always feel like you're being watched just beyond your field of vision. If you've ever seen the Blair Witch Project, you'll understand. Rustling leaves or a snap of a twig is enough to startle the bravest soul in a setting. Out of nowhere, my buddy's dog starts growling and then begins to whimper and back up. I'd never heard him whimper before then. Also, all of our phones suddenly started spazing out. One of us didn't have our phone set to silent, so his death metal tone scared us all shirtless, and we didn't stick around long enough for anything else to happen since we've seen our share of horror films. We achieved our objective, though, as my date wouldn't let go of my arm the entire ride home. The creepiest thing that I noticed was how right as this was all happening. The wind just completely stopped, it was a very windy night, especially for the windy city, and everything was eerily silent like the universe itself was afraid and was being silent, waiting for what would happen next. I still drive past the place on occasion, but I don't let my thoughts linger too much on it. So my friends live near this old native grounds, and often for his nighttime jogs early in the morning, he swore up and down he saw people in cloaks around a big bonfire, so naturally he calls me and one more of our friends to come over the next day to go down into the woods where we saw them. Great idea, I know so we physically see where the bonfire was from the big pile of ash the next day. We go deeper into the woods, and I'm sure I was just paranoid, but the air around us was heavy and it felt like we were being watched. The deeper we got, the heavier it was. Then the trees around us started to have 90 degrees bends in them, they grew that way. We obviously got spooked and started to turn back as our braver friend decided to keep going by himself. So me and the original friend start walking away slowly, yelling that we'll leave soon, and he doesn't answer for like 5 minutes. Suddenly he runs back, looks pale, and all he says is chase before me, and the original friend decides duck this and sprints for the exit of the wooded area, leaving the other friend in the dust as we sprint away. I gave a quick glance behind us, and there was something tall and all black chasing us. 
He was blocked mostly by the leaves, so all I could see was his chest and lower, just mad dashing for the three of us. We make it past the break of the woods, but keep sprinting, because unlike in movies, things will still come after you regardless if it's the woods or not. We must have run a literal mile before relaxing. We stop at this playground across the street from this high school, and as we walk back, I heard someone say my nickname, which sounded like my brother, who was out of state. At the same time, the original friend says he could hear someone say my actual name, but he hears a deep voice instead. I was in St. Mary's Infirmary in St. Louis, demolished in 2016, when I was 16 or 17. I had this thing where the shittier an area looked, the fewer people went up there. This led to finding lots of great undiscovered spots in buildings around town. The infirmary was really ducked up back then in 2001-02, and I had the brilliant idea to climb these stairs that had one stringer still attached to the wall and were free floating with no floor at the base. This is the stairwell up to the sixth floor? Which seemed like it was a maintenance or storage floor judging by the stuff that fell through the floor in different areas. There's got to be something good up there, right? Nobody had climbed that staircase in years. So up I went, and I was cautiously moving around up there, and I found some room that had a bunch of junk in it, and there was some crazy piece of electrical equipment about the size of a typewriter on a shelf, and I decided to take it down and get a closer look at it. It was a lot heavier than it looked, and it fell out of my grip and crashed through the floor, taking a floor joist with it. The whole floor I was standing on took a different pitch, and I flew out of that ducking room. You know how when you are standing on some ice and it cracks, some idiot makes a run for it, cracking the ice more with every running step? That's how I did that floor, going all the way back to those stairs, which ended up being the sturdiest part of that idiotic escapade. It turns out the joist that fell went through two other floors before stopping. That was it for that day, and I didn't go in there again until it was coming down 15 years later. Another time, when I was 15 or so, we went down to a ghost town out about a mile or two back in the woods in unincorporated Jefferson County. We'd been there a bunch of times before, but this time there were a bunch of signs warning about no trespassing and ground spikes, whatever the duck those are. We brushed them off until we saw these two dirtbag hillbillies come out of one of the buildings. We ran off and finally stopped and asked ourselves why we were running and that they had no business out there any more than we did because it was power company land. Then the hillbillies showed up and told us to duck off, and they rented the land for hunting. We told them they were full of SHT, and that ground was owned by the power company. They told us if they saw us back there, they were going to call it a hunting accident. That was that for a while, we went back eventually, and like all spots that kids find out about, it went downhill quick. It might still be there, but I doubt it. I was using this thing called Randonautica, went exploring, and found the destination. It was a small road in the middle of the country I use country a bit liberally here, it was some of the rural roads around the city we live in, just off of a busy road. There were some houses around, and things looked alright. I fell down the road, since it wasn't very long, like maybe a minute to get to the dead end, thinking there was a turnaround or something at the end. It was not very exciting to look at, so we were a bit disappointed until. I pull up, and there is this duplex with about four people rushing around and getting things out of the house. So I pull up and am about to do a three-point turn when all of a sudden this man starts charging my truck. Now, these people looked like what you would imagine meth heads would look like. I threw my truck in reverse and gunned it backwards down the little road. I looked back, and this dude is still following us, almost running down the hill, so I whip out into the road and gun it. My wife and I were a bit shaken after that one, all because of a simple, harmless thing we were doing. There's an abandoned insane asylum in Northville, Michigan, that my friends and I explored three times. This is the story of the third and final time we broke in. I still get chills every time I remember this night. The first two times we went, the asylum was actually more interesting than creepy to explore. Both times we happened to run into very friendly people there, the first time we ran into another group of high school kids, scared the shit out of them at first, and the second time we met a couple stoner Vietnam vets that gave us a tour of the place. It's an entire complex complete with underground tunnels, a mortuary, and lots of files and things from the 50s. This time, however, we were alone and only had two flashlights between three people. Much like the guy with the story about the World War II base, the echoed footsteps sound like they're coming from behind you and always seem to take one more step after you stop. So after exploring much of the asylum like this and being conspicuously creeped out already, we decide to head to the main building. It's about 18 stories tall, and the view from the top is pretty cool because it's by far the tallest building anywhere remotely close, and you can see Detroit from up there. Anyhow, we're nearing the top of the seemingly endless stair corridor when the girl that's with us freezes and whispers for us to stop. I heard footsteps, 
she whispers. I tried to tell her it was just footsteps echoing, but when both of them made me shut up and listen, I could hear it as clear as day, the unmistakable sound of footsteps coming from the top floor. Now the building is tall but very small area-wise, so we were very close to the sounds. Still standing on the stairs, we whisper amongst ourselves about what we're going to do. My very stupid friend insists that it's probably just another friendly person and we should go up and say hi. I try to explain to him that you don't want to meet the kind of people that pace the top floor of an old asylum in the middle of the night. We couldn't convince him, and he went to head up the stairs, but I was like, duck this, and just started running down the stairs. Fortunately, he followed us, and we got out of there without ever finding out who or what was walking around up there that night. To top it all off, a cop passing by on the road spotted us after we came out of the building, and we had to run into the asylum complex to get away. I still think back to that night sometimes and wonder who was up there. There were definitely no guards, so it was probably either a gang, there's gang graffiti all over the asylum, for the guppies, or the tortured soul of a crazy person. Either way, that was way too close. Back in the 80s, me and my friend Don used to explore the woods near our homes. One time we discovered an old trailer someone had dumped in the middle of nowhere. Oddly enough, there was no road, no tire tracks, and no way of getting there. The rotted out wheels were still attached to the underside, and there were no cinder blocks holding up the rest of it, as is common. We curiously approached the trailer and walked along its length to see if there was anything of note on the other side. Curious and finding the entire situation bizarre, I walked back around to the front and tried the handle. It was unlocked. I opened up the door and peered inside. To our surprise, the entire trailer was furnished. There was an armchair, a couch, curtains, an old wooden TV set with a tiny screen, tables, chairs, paintings, and even curtains and throw rugs. But while everything was still laid out as if someone lived there, all the furnishings had succumbed to years of neglect and unchecked humidity. Everything was covered with a light dusting of mold, and the stench of rotting vegetation was strong. Don joined me and surveyed the interior. We began to examine the furniture and interior at great length. Everything looked like it was from the 1940s. All of the photos hanging on the walls, the few we could still make out, were black and white shots of people in old-style dresses. The automobiles in the backgrounds of several photos were all circa 1930s 1950s. We both touched the furniture next, I put my hand on the couch, and Don touched the armchair and quickly withdrew with disgust. They were damp and slimy. We soon realized that everything in the trailer was damp and coated in some kind of viscous oil or slime. We stopped touching things at that point. As I made my way into the kitchen area, something crunched under my shoe. I looked down to find the skeleton of a rabbit beneath my foot. I called Donnie over and showed him the bones. They were still articulated for the most part, held together with dried sinew. Donnie suggested it had gotten in and died of starvation. I continued over to the old refrigerator. Instead of a handle, it had a latch that you had to lift up to open the door. I pried it up and quickly withdrew my hand, as the handle was also covered with the slime and I looked with disgust at it before wiping it on my jeans. Then the smell hit me, and I looked up at the long, dead appliance. The inside of the refrigerator was packed with more skeletons of various animals. It looked as if someone had just jammed dozens of remains into the refrigerator and freezer sections, and they had all jumbled together into a mass of dried ribs, skulls, and leg bones. When Don saw it, he started to swear and wanted to leave. Who the hell would put dozens of skeletons in a refrigerator in a trailer in the middle of nowhere? I made light of the situation to ease the tension. As I looked longer into the mess of tangled bones, I glanced over at the oven. I could see through the crusted oven window the now familiar bits of yellowed animal bones. I grabbed the oven handle and opened the door to another tangled mass of bone and flesh. I called over to Don, who had retreated to the living room. He looked over and began losing it, saying he was done with this. As he started backing away towards the front door, I opened a cabinet, and more skeletons tumbled out. These were loose and weren't packed in like the refrigerator and oven. At this point, Don had left the trailer and was outside, yelling for me to join him. I glanced down the hallway towards the bedrooms. I asked Don what he thought might be down the hallway. He said he didn't care and wanted to leave right now. I told him I was going to take a look. Despite him swearing at me and threatening to leave me there, I started down the darkened hallway to the bedrooms. There was a bedroom directly behind the kitchen, and I confidently opened the door. It was difficult to see in this room. Unlike the living room area and the kitchen, there was only one small window, and the light was further obscured by desiccated curtains that hung damply from the cheap rods. As my eyes adjusted, I found the room to be largely empty aside from a scattering of a few more skeletons and torn bits of old newspaper on the aged, yellowed linoleum. Not bothering to enter the room, 
I walked further down the hall despite Donnie's continued protests. I slowed as I neared the bathroom and the back bedroom. The air was thick and repugnant with decay and mold. I took a breath of cleaner air and then slid open the bathroom door, a very cheap, thin plank of wood on rollers. The bathroom was barely visible in the gloom, but it smelled of rot. I could only barely see the toilet and tub slash shower combination, but they appeared empty. I slid the door shut again to contain the smell and took another breath of cleaner air near the first bedroom before heading back in to see whatever lay behind the door in that last bedroom. I reached the door and noticed that no light came from beneath the crack at the bottom. I grasped the knob, even though it was coated with the same gunk that lined every surface of the trailer, and tried to open the door. The knob turned easily enough, but something seemed to be pressing against the door from the inside. I pushed harder, and I could hear a damp cracking sound as whatever was holding the door shut slowly gave way. Still, the door didn't open. I was determined, though, so I put my shoulder to the cheap wood and shoved. Slowly, the door opened up, but I had to fight it every single inch. I soon saw the reason, the entire floor was covered in animal skeletons about a foot thick. There was not a single inch of the floor space that didn't have that strange, tangled mass of animal remains. Things were much more damp in this area, and the corpses seemed to grow into the walls. The bones were larger too, and the animals in this room were larger too, dogs, it looked like, and deer, in addition to rabbits, raccoons, and others. The only area clear of the bodies was the ark where I had forced the door open. Unlike the previous bedroom, this room was furnished with a bed and a dresser, but both have long succumbed to decay. The bed frame had survived, but the mattress, or what was left of it, was nothing but an uneven mass of various molds and fungi. The dresser has collapsed in on itself and also has various mushrooms sprouting from its legs and exposed shelving. The mass of bones seemed to pour out from beneath the bed in a flood of decomposition, while a surprisingly luxuriant black mold had spread upwards to engulf the back wall and then across the ceiling towards the one window. I discovered that the air was completely unbreathable and staggered backwards towards the kitchen, choking on the spores. To Don's relief, I headed back outside to get out of the putrid air. I leaned on the side of the trailer, coughing and choking for several minutes. As I was slowly able to breathe again, the implications of what I had seen began to pique my curiosity once more. The skeletons were piled up against the door, so how exactly did the skeletons get in there in the first place? The window? I walked along the span of the trailer to the window of that back bedroom. I could still smell the stinging odor of mold in my nose. The window was closed. Don asked what I'd seen, and I told him. He didn't like my revelation one bit and just wanted to leave as quickly as possible. So we went home. Months later, I tried to find the trailer again but either couldn't remember where it was or someone had removed it. Whatever happened to the trailer of bones, I'll never know. There used to be this storm drain opening near the elementary school that I went to in Colorado. All through elementary school, kids would dare each other to go in, but nobody ever really did. A few kids stood a few feet inside, but that's about it. A couple years later, in middle school, my friend and I decided to venture in and map it out. We found that it went under the school under the soccer field and baseball diamond, and into a neighborhood. The passage narrowed so that we, 7th graders at the time, had to crawl and drag ourselves along, but it eventually opened up into these big round rooms, with ladders leading up to manhole covers 40 to 50 feet up. We would bring flashlights and notebooks and try to map out all of the side tunnels, it was honestly a ton of fun. Once we were fairly far in, 15 minutes or crawling after walking a little less than half a mile, there was a super sketchy looking adult man and his massive dog. We didn't hear him, and we stumbled upon him without ever having thought someone else would be in there. We hightailed it out of there and didn't go back for quite some time. In December of 2016, I planned to explore an abandoned distillery in the woods in the middle of nowhere in Kentucky for the first time. It was freezing cold and still dark as I walked through the woods at like 5 a.m. as I got closer and the sun started to come up, I started to see the outline of the buildings. My light revealed a crumbling plywood board leaning against a tree with the words stay the hell out sloppily spray painted on it, but other than that, the place was wide open. I knew there was a farm nearby, but other than that, this place was isolated. After crouching down in the woods for a little while until it wasn't completely dark, I entered the first building. I thought I could faintly smell something foul, but because of allergies, my sense of smell wasn't at its best, so I brushed it off. The place was massive, and after shooting lots of pictures, I started making my way through the other four buildings. I kept hearing weird sounds that might freak out other people, but I was an experienced explorer. I was still kind of on edge and nervous because I'd never been here before. The smell started getting worse until I could really notice it. Finally, I climbed up a staircase with several missing steps and entered the final building. 
When I flipped my light on, it revealed tons of graffiti on the walls, which was surprising because there was practically none anywhere else. There were wooden pallets everywhere, and small bullet shells scattered the ground. I noticed a pair of old boots and clothes, but they looked like they'd been there for a while. I noticed an old chalkboard on the wall from when the distillery was still active with some weird stuff written on it, but I kept going. And the smell, it was terrible at this point. I started walking around more curious than anything else, not worried about photography or anything else. The pallets were stacked maybe 5 feet high, and I rounded a corner in the maze and stopped. To that point, I'd never had anything crazy happen while exploring, but I knew I finally had a horror story. There was a big open space in the pallets, with blood smeared everywhere and bugs everywhere. There were hunks of carcasses and a pallet stack making a sort of table, or altar, and I was mortified. Further inspection revealed it was some sort of animal, but regardless, I sped out of there as the sun had finally come up and didn't look back. There used to be an old abandoned school in a town near my house. It was heavily boarded up and super hard to get into. Well, a friend and I managed to get inside by climbing up the side of the school via a pipe slash fire escape combo and slipping through a window on the roof. We explored the basement, which was flooded. It was kind of creepy to see stairs disappear into water. We had just left the gym when we heard footsteps coming from the doors on the other side of the gym. Scary, especially considering it sounded like it was one person, not another group of explorers like us, blocking our exit back up to the roof, the only way out otherwise was behind us, through boarded up doors. They sounded like someone who was walking around and stopping periodically. There was no light coming from that direction, and we couldn't fathom why someone would come into a creepy place like this alone. We waited for the footsteps to stop, then snuck across the gym, peered down the hallways, saw no one, and continued towards the stairs, which would lead us back to the roof. Halfway down the hall, we hear someone sprinting behind us. Probably 50 meters away or so, down a typical high school hallway. Now, it is mostly dark in here, but there was a small amount of light coming in through cracks in the window boards. Still, we didn't see anything behind us as we quickly ran up the stairs. We didn't stop until we got back to the fourth floor. We listened for noise, nothing he hopped out the window and climbed back down the pipe. Not my GTFO story, but one I caused. Me and some friends were exploring this abandoned mental facility, and we heard some others doing the same. So we followed them a bit, as quietly as we can. We spotted them, two guys, we were three guys and two girls, so me and one of the other guys went and followed a bit until they were inside one of the buildings. Well, we've been here before, and we somewhat know the building. If you go straight on, there's a loop around the building that takes you back to the start, so we took the other loop. One of the rooms was dark, and I mean, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face during the day. We waited. And waited. Then we heard them, they were sort of spooked, we could hear them talking in hurried voices. One of them said something like I swear I heard something that wasn't us well, me and my friend were giggling a bit, so we shut up. We see torchlight, and we hide ourselves from plain view up this staircase a bit, and we hear one of the guys say to the other that he wants to check out the room me and my friend were hiding in. His friend took a little convincing, but eventually agreed. The second they walked through that doorway, me and my friend started banging on the floor, screaming, get out of our room. I swear, I've never seen people hide ill it so fast out of a place before. One time I was hiking in the woods behind my house and I found a mattress surrounded by heroin needles and used condoms. I mentioned it to one of my friends who went to school in the town, and he, very nonchalantly, said, oh yeah, that's duck mattress. Fast forward a few years, and one of the dishwashers at the restaurant I was cooking at let it slip that his first time was on a duck mattress. Now, this dude weighed about 350 and was maybe 510, so the visual of that was just terrible, and unsurprisingly, he never lived it down. Kitchen staff are duck and brutal, so giving them that kind of ammo is not the best idea. I checked on it last year when I was hiking, and sadly, it's all but disintegrated into the forest floor. There are just a few scraps of fabric, some rusted out coil springs, a smattering of old condoms, and some old empty Doritos bags. I like to think those were left over from that magical night that fat dude had his cherry busted. Exploring the grounds of a big old New England mental institutions campus at night it's a full moon, but it's pitch black inside because the windows are so dirty. Being dumb kids before smartphones, we didn't come prepared with a lot of light and were mostly navigating with two flashlights between our group and the moonlight when outside. We're in the main building, and most of it is what you'd expect, 60s 70s decor, peeling paint, a couple weird looking chairs, and two legit rubber rooms. A movie had been shot there at some point, so some of the walls are burned from a stunt or something, I guess. 
there are two stairwells in the building on either end, and we have to keep alternating between them because there's stuff in the way. We keep going through the floors until we reach the roof. The roof doors are these big, heavy, solid metal doors. The far stairwell door won't budge at all, so we go back down and try the other stairwell. This one, as we can see, is kind of wedged open, and the top corner of the door is bent back, letting light in. We squeeze out onto the roof and walk around for a bit. I happened to be holding the flashlight and turned it back towards the door. The door wasn't just bent, it was straight up and peeled back to open it like a tuna can. There were three huge scars that I can only describe as claw marks, each one as long as an adult's forearm. I lost my SHT and insisted it was time to go. We made an expeditious retreat out of the building, but it was still a good two to three minute walk back to our cars, which was definitely the most terrifying part of the night. I have no idea what could have made those marks. I'm just really glad we didn't decide to go into some of the other buildings that were totally sealed up. You had to enter those through some underground tunnels, steam tunnels, I think? That connected the buildings, and the entrance was super sketchy. Boy, oh boy, do I have a story. I went urban exploring on an abandoned college campus, which was pretty cool and due to be demolished, and there was some really nice graffiti. At the time, I kept sending video messages to a friend of mine who was roaming around looking at everything. The way the area was set up, there was pretty much a singular building in this giant lot with nothing on it, right in the middle, with an open area about 100 meters either way. The building was three stories tall, and on the ground floor there was an open area where there appeared to be an abandoned car. So I was messing around looking at this graffiti and the random junk everywhere and recording videos for my friend when I finally went to record the graffiti right next to the car. I started filming a video of the graffiti when, what do you know? The car turns on. I immediately throw my hands up and point towards the gate to gesture, sorry, I didn't realize someone was here, I'll be on my way. When the guy starts blaring on the horn and starts revving the engine, at this point I'm startled and decide to gun it down the driveway back to the gate, and what do you know? He starts speeding after me in the car while still blaring on the horn. Due to being startled and running, I apparently accidentally hit send on the video I took on my phone to my friend, while all of us captioned it 1111 as I was running away. I have the video saved if anyone's curious. At this point, I was right in the headlights with him right behind me, so I turned off the driveway and ran over a pile of rocks, falling down on my way down the other side of them. I scratched my knee really badly, and my glasses went flying off and got scratched up too. I get the glasses and sprint, more like hobble quickly, to the fence where there's some bush covering. The guy pulls up nearby and winds down the window, and you could smell the car from how far I was, it was putrid, and the guy for sure looked like he was living out of the car. I have insane adrenaline going and sort of slink further away through the bushes, but I can't get over the fence. I figured I could wait the guy out. I was there for around 20 minutes while he sat there with his car idling. By this point, my friend was practically having a panic attack, thinking I just got murdered, and my adrenaline was wearing off and the pain from my leg was setting in, so I couldn't climb the fence and get away quickly without him noticing. My friend was messaging me like crazy, asking if I was okay and she ended up driving to the place to rescue me. She pulled up a bit up the street, and the guy drove up towards there, which gave me the chance to climb the fence. She rushed down to where I had said I was, picked me up, and we drove off. Never have I been so scared in my life, and I have never appreciated someone more. Earlier in the day on our road trip, we were driving up and down back roads in a very rural area, looking for cool abandoned properties to explore. One back road in particular had an abandoned property pretty much every kilometer we traveled. Just abandoned farmhouse after abandoned farmhouse, with a few modern looking abandoned houses as well. We were driving very slowly past one house in particular that looked extremely old. It was out in the middle of a field not too far from the road, sitting partially collapsed in a tree row. It looked to be from the early 1900s and had two stories. As we drove past, I was looking through the front window of the house, which was like a large bay style window with no glass left, and I saw something standing there. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but the thing standing in the window looked like it had to be at least 7 feet tall and a solid beige color. Its body looked like a cross between a dog and a human, and the head looked like a human head but with no discernible facial features. I looked to my sister and said tell me you just saw that. But she missed it. So we turned back around and stopped across from it again. My sister had her DSLR camera with her that day and managed to actually snap a picture of it. The strangest part is that she took a series of photos, and it only showed up in the first photo. Even stranger yet is that we could no longer see it by eye after we turned around. It only showed up in that first photo and then completely disappeared. 
I don't think it could have been sunlight or something else, as the house was completely shaded by the tree row and only the front of the house was exposed. I was exploring a big ruin with a friend, which is basically a huge collection of old buildings interconnected by courtyards. Some walls had fallen in, and arches had collapsed, not super safe. In one of the biggest buildings, we found a big room with a long line of detailed mannequins in crazy costumes. By detailed, I mean each face looked different from the other, like each one had been handmade. And the clothes were bonkers, old-fashioned but incredibly detailed with what looked like real jewels on them. I started getting the creeps and feeling like we should get out of there. We realized that the mannequins were larger than life-size. Obviously, someone had gone to a lot of trouble to make them and put them there, and we had no idea when they would be back. As we were leaving, my friend noticed a stone table with a little bell on a stand and, of course, had to look closer. There was a carved sign saying not to ring the bell. Okay, now I was really ready to go. It was looking like some kind of perverse trap, like some saw type thing. But my stupid friend grabbed my arm and insisted on ringing the little bell. My buddy and I spent many years crawling through sewer pipes. One day, we were out in the woods. Me, him, and another friend. We were deep in the woods. We found some pipes sticking out of a hillside and agreed to explore them. Well, we crawl down this thing a good 600 feet or so on our hands and knees. At times, it gets smaller, and we are on our stomachs. Finally, it comes to one of those big manhole rooms, and we get the impression we're under a house. Of course, we also know that in some places, manholes will exist in the middle of nowhere for future developments. Anyway, the room has three other smaller pipes heading off in different directions like slithering on your stomach size. We choose one and make our friend Z go first. We go down about 300 feet, and he shouts back that there's something in the way. He thinks it's a dead animal. But since we are using weak headlamps, he can't tell. We coerced him to climb over it. Then comes me. He's freaking out, saying SHT is all over his clothes and he doesn't know what it is. I climb over this dark lump of refuse. Feels like a body but is not human. Not even animals. Just alien. Smells bad. Smells horrible. I slide over this nasty shit, almost puking. My buddy behind me comes next. Same story. We keep going. Asking ourselves why we even do this SHT in the first place. Exploration. Etc. into the unknown. The forbidden. We crawl another few hundred feet. Z starts complaining about the horrible, awful stench ahead. We can't for the life of us get him to continue. He ends up throwing up. We start throwing around the idea of gas of some sort. He says with his headlamp that there's something big up ahead. It looks like an honest to God body. Human maybe. We slide backward quickly until we get to the manhole room. We crawled out quickly. We get out into the daylight and investigate the shit stuck to our clothes from the thing we slid over. It's dark. Bloody dark. Refuse dark. Looks like fur. We agree that it was probably a trapped animal. Never go back again.